Welcome to Enlightened Conversations. I am joined with the delightful Leanne Barefoot Medium today. Welcome, Leanne. How are you? Hi, Michelle. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to share with you and your listeners today. Uh, awesome. I, I just want to briefly introduce Leanne, for those of you who don't know this wonderful being, um, who is actually streaming in live with us from Colombia all the way over in South America, which is really exciting. I love it when we get to um, transcend borders, Leanne. It's awesome. It makes my heart sing. So welcome from there. And for those of you who don't know Leanne, Leanne is uh, the host of Barefoot TV. Um, luckily, I got my barefoots on today. Totally in, in line with that, Leanne. <laughs> um, Love it. Happiest in bare feet, I must admit. Um, Leanne's also the host of Barefoot Radio, author and publisher of her very own Temple magazine. She's a gifted and highly sought out after medium internationally. She's also um, very, very keen to help people to find their purpose. And today we're shifting as we say, shit, and talking about how we can actually shift that and why and the importance of that. So welcome, Leanne. Thank you so much, Michelle. And, you know, it's so timely that we're talking about shifting the shit <laughs> yeah. when we're going through so many energy changes at the moment as well. So thank you. You're welcome. And um, just before we went on uh, live, um, you mentioned to me that you had just finished it's so interesting and synchronistic i'll share mine too um mm. that you just finished a, a, an intensive on helping people was it 12 days to 12 shift, days yeah to shift their a, day, a 12 day group um uh, basically a mini coaching program through 12 days of helping people to shift through their shit which was about looking at what stories and beliefs that were limiting people, what emotions or low vibrations people had going on, as well as sabotage patterns that they may be playing out in their everyday lives that are keeping them in resistance or blocking or struggling or, you know, that feeling stuck yeah. where you can't quite shift and change what you're experiencing in your everyday life. Yeah, so, and you're like, yeah. why? Why can't I get what I want and, and whatnot? Yeah, and look, you know, I, I love the law of attraction and one of the, the things that I do is channel Abraham who works with the law of attraction, but it's more, more than that. It's, you know, not just putting a thought out there. It's what you do with your energy around your emotions and what you're vibrating as well as what actions you're taking to create the momentum towards what you want to manifest and create in your life. And, yeah. you know, I love supporting people to be able to see the shit <laughs> and, and really recognise and acknowledge what's playing out so that they can then transform it and change it and have a different experience. Yeah. Hey, Raul, I just want to say hello, Raul. Thanks for ch tuning in. Um, I, I agree 100%. Leanne, it's, 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 it's kind of ironic and kind of funny. There's so many things we could laugh about it and poke fun at um, because whoever thought it would be awesome to be able to see your own shit. And the reality is it is awesome because when you can actually see, I think this is, this is the gift of it, when you can actually see... Um, how that particular barrier, block, belief or what have you has really um, gotten to a point where it is holding you back. You, you can actually see the gift it's helping you to move forward by recognising it because it's often not till that point of when we're really frustrated, we're sick and tired of being sick and tired, we're sick and tired of feeling heavy, we're sick and tired of feeling blocked or stuck or, ugh, you know, depressed, whatever it is that we go, enough let's do something about it and let's let's move what are we where am i moving towards and you can start asking those questions about purpose and things like that only when you get to that point really i think sometimes the frustration yeah and i think you make a really good point michelle about you know heading towards your purpose but the reality is a lot of people don't know what that is and that is where it really begins because 
if we don't know what our dream, what our vision and what our goals are, putting it in kind of those real, real day terms, then how can we take the actions or, or have the thoughts or even the emotions that move us towards what we want? We're not clear. And yeah. that really is part of the shit, to, yeah. to be honest, that clouds and, and, and just allows us to go into procrastination, overthinking, what am I doing wrong, all of those patterns or that heaviness, that doubt, that frustration, overwhelm, sadness, whatever, yeah. that is all shit at the end of the day that we need to look at and really become aware. And it's it's only about awareness. And Yeah, I agree. We, I agree. When we become aware of it, we can then go, okay, well, what is it trying to get me to become clearer about? And that's where that purpose, that dream, the vision and the goals come in. And if you don't know what that is, how do you know how to shift and change? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and the other thing that comes up for me as you're talking is that when two things, firstly, um, when we start to become aware of how much um, clearing our baggage can help us to find purpose and to also to help us to, um, you know, feel better just in general because I know, you know, when you shift stuff, you feel great. Um, I think... Sometimes people can get addicted to that process of, of, of swimming around a little bit in their in their in their poo poo, <laughs> and I think you know we're talking about shifting, not swimming in. Um, I think there's a big difference between like lurking around in it unconsciously and then going fishing in it um, with you know with kind of almost like addicted to the process of um, perfectionism around self. I mm. actually believe we don't have to look for it it will present itself like um uh, appropriately as we're actually progressing it'll naturally come up won't it leanne like that next next level stuff like of course we, you know it's it's like how do you describe that in your world that's that's how i i would say the perfect um way to progress towards more a more enlightened conscious way of living is is don't don't kind of seek out the shit so much but enjoy enjoy your life and then when it comes up don't avoid it be aware of it um, learn the, the the skills to to shift it, and then enjoy more. That's what I would say. Exactly, and I love how you explain it. And like I said, I you know with the twelve day program that I just did, we started with about I think twenty five people in the group, and the reality is when you start asking people to look at the stories whether it's around business finance we had some people looking at okay i want to move my business and you know spiritual and otherwise to the next level i've got problems with finances they're not flowing or love and relationships whatever it was and the reality was we whittled that group down a bit because some people weren't willing yeah to look at or take responsibility for the shit. So like you said, they, they were swimming around in it. Yeah. yeah, I want the change and I'm not willing to do the work to get it. So yeah. how, how's that going to change for you? We, And I think so many people are looking for a quick fix that, you know, the, the reality is no one else can fix you. you no. But we can learn shortcuts. I'm all about the shortcut because, I, I, as I said, I don't think we should swim around in it. So there has to be some kind of a balance there, knowing that there are really quick ways you can shift your shit, but also knowing you do have to take responsibility to take action to do that. It's kind of like that balance, isn't it? Oh, you're frozen, sweetheart. Gosh, I hope I haven't frozen too. Um, thanks thanks for the comments, guys. Um, hi, hi, Deb. Hi, Jewel. Hi, Thanks, thanks so much for the comment, Raul. Manifestation through positive action, absolutely. Hey, are oh, you back, Leanne? Did you? I'm did back. You know yeah. Money? So, like, like you were saying, Michelle. You know, yes, there were people in the group that that just didn't want to take and were willing to take that consistent action. Like yeah. Raul says, manifestation through action. We yeah. have to act, and 
some people were in a sabotage pattern of it's someone else's responsibility. You know, I can't do anything about it. Well, yeah, you can. Uh, you can change the way you're feeling and you're focusing. And yeah. that then changes the outcome of what you're seeing. But there was other people in the group who were consistent in daily taking the actions and getting the tools that they needed to create the change. And let me tell you, they have just had synchronicities and opportunities flowing in every single day that get them towards their dreams, their visions and their goals. Oh, my God, that is so good. It's so good as a teacher and educator of this, Leanne, that you can actually provide people with that insight because, um, yeah, a lot of people need to hear that. You know, you, you, you have a whole, here you have a whole group of people that are coming in with, always the intention to shift stuff but um when you have the difference of that responsibility factor where they they're, they're committing i think you know for me leanne i think that that responsibility factor is actually um all about how much we value ourselves and when we hand over our value to someone else that it's someone else's responsibility to make us happy so that we can shift our shears, I think we uh, we really devalue ourselves and we really hand over our power. And I feel like what you're saying is, hey, this, this is an invitation to really value yourself. Take responsibility for the reality you're creating. Don't hand that power over to someone else. That they have the power to actually provide that happiness that you really seek. Um, so thank you for that gift, Leanne. That is absolutely awesome. And, yeah, and, and look, you know, one of the things that, like you said, I'm I'm streaming in from Colombia in South America, and where I'm located is known as the heart of the world, mm -hmm. and the indigenous people. It's a really power powerful energy space, and the indigenous Kogi people here believe in what's called the mirror realm, yeah. and that mirror realm is the spiritual realm, exactly like we talk about law of attraction and manifesting. Mm -hmm. And that mirror realm is where you go to spiritually. What happens in the mirror realm eventually appears in the physical. That's yeah. their belief systems. And yeah. exactly like manifesting law of attraction stuff. And like you said, it's about taking that responsibility and going, well, hang on what's being mirrored in my physical reality right now if i'm having an argument with someone or conflicted or there's some lack of clarity there you've really got to come back and look within and go okay where am i not being clear where am i conflicted yep. and where am i going back and forwards or struggling with with something so that I can then change that, become clearer about my goals, my desires, whatever it is, and then that's reflected in the physical. It's true. And, you know, you hear these stories where people have these crisis points and they really commit to themselves and they really say, you know what, I'm putting myself first, I've got to do this, I've got to discover myself, whatever. And then all of a sudden within like a very, very short period of time, you see all these things unfolding in your life that will help them. And that's what I call instant manifestation as well, that they're instantly manifesting the resources, tools, the time, the energy, the people to help them find themselves. They've put that intention out there and they've made themselves like matter, not that they don't matter, but they've, they've decided I matter. And then, yeah. and then all of a sudden that's mirrored back to them in this physical plane as well. Um, and we shouldn't discount that as part of manifestation too because it's often we think it's just about money, but the reality is that the mirror realm of what you're saying, all those intentions come back around and they come into physical. So they are mirroring your barriers and they are mirroring your support. And I want to just say thank you, Jag. Jag says uh, taking responsibility makes the biggest difference. And Deb says uh, we wear the key to unlocking our own potential. Thank you, Deb. We do. We do indeed. Yeah. And Raul's uh, saying many of us in our journey hope the shift in us will be through others till we get to understand that others might facilitate the process. However, it's up to us to shift, which is very true. Some of us wait, 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 don't we? And it's... Mm -hmm. um. 
And, 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 and then we wonder why other people don't commit. And then we wonder why other people don't commit. That's isn't that true? And and look, I wanna one of my other passions is, you know, love and relationships and work with twin flames and soulmate stuff. And for me, relationships are all about connection, regardless of who it's with. And they, you know, relationships provide our biggest area of growth and can bring up the biggest amount of shit, yeah. to be honest, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, triggers and patterns and, and all of that. But you've got to, and you've got to be willing to look at what, whoever it is, if it's a family member, a friend, a partner, a lover or whoever, that's triggering something within you or bringing up an emotion that's, you know, frustration or whatever, you've got to be able to sit back and go, okay, what's this person triggering within me to look at? Or is this this other person's stuff and I just need to detach from it because it's not always about us in yeah. connections and relationships. But it's also important to look at who you're surrounding yourself with, particularly yeah. when it comes to business because mm-hmm. um, some people can be in your business, whether it's clients or colleagues or whatever, and you can think they're on your team, but they're kind of pulling you backwards or making that journey a little bit more difficult. And you've really got to be willing to step back, reflect, look at who's on your team and who's not. And make sure you've got cheerleaders around you rather than people who are poo-pooing your dreams and your visions. Yeah, I agree. And and often that's a mirror as well. In fact, um, I was literally two things that you just said. Firstly, I was speaking to someone this morning about um, something that happened to me yesterday, which which was a a, a beautiful thing. And um, and 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 that person was also involved in it as well. And I felt like. Um, I had there had been a synchronistic event that that aligned us together, um, and and it was after I had made a decision about my involvement in something, and then they came into my my sphere, and I felt like that that my meeting with them a, a little while ago um, swung back around like the good karma boomerang, and showed me that what I had said yes to also um, was was very powerful in so far as uh, the team, like a team of people that you want to surround yourself with. And then also this morning, the second thing that happened was I got contacted by someone that if I hadn't have said in my mind and my intention, yes, in my energy to this particular thing that I'm helping, um, which, which I'll announce in a little while, um, in a few weeks, um, helping on a global scale. If I hadn't said yes, that I wouldn't have attracted that person, I don't think, to contact me. It's like already um, spirits mirroring uh, people into my, into my sphere that are the people that this will actually help and support and also um, they will be, I, I think, contributors to the bigger thing. So I can honestly say that it works very quickly and when you say yes in your intentionality to to um, shift your shift the barriers but then when you're also clear that continues to create such rapid transformation and confirmation in your life so yeah thank you for sharing that leanne so true oh my god just so you know massive one of the ladies in the in the shifting the ship um, program she made the decision even though finances were a little bit of a challenge to commit to a coaching program with me and paid um, as soon as she got off the call from me and committed to it she yeah. messaged me saying she had a client pay her and she had the money there oh, yeah. so <laughs> you know, the universe provides even if you don't know how it's going to happen mm-hmm. and you know, even before we started today I said to you that I just had another big piece of the puzzle drop in because yeah. I cleared some other stuff that wasn't really flowing and you know we we have to be willing to look at what's no longer serving us and clear it it doesn't mean it won't come back around if it's meant to it's just maybe it's not the right time yeah or it's not the right thing for you exactly and i think as we get clearer we we're able to discern the timing versus um the situation 
Um, in the past, I, I think in early days um, of, of learning, you know, in, you know, intuition and trusting myself and all those kind of things, sometimes I would think it was the person. But actually it was just the timing. And I think it's really... Um, yeah, in your in sometimes we oh, I was not flying with this person. It, that person and I mustn't be. Uh, that doesn't necessarily. Um, that just say, you know just sit with it because sometimes it's just the timing. You know you've made connections with these people. Um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to certain things that may come back around. We are in this spiritual industry. We um we need to stick together. We are working at, I guess you could say, um, the small why is is our why we're here this lifetime, but the bigger why is the, and bigger purpose is that we're all in this together and we're all helping each other. So, um, you know, uh, <laughs> maybe maybe that person, the timing might, might not be this lifetime and uh, maybe another lifetime, but, but, but if we've met them this lifetime and we've, dealt with in this lifetime my bigger belief um, is that we have business together there's there's business we've created and there's business that we need to resolve and there's business where it needs to be resolved on both ends so sometimes we get to resolve that from our end in this life and the other person doesn't but it doesn't mean that we won't have that connection with them again there may well be another connection another opportunity to resolve our business and to come to a place of peace. So I think that that's another thing, an important thing in shifting our ship is knowing that sometimes we shift it here and um, we're at a place of peace with a person and they're not. And and we, there's a certain level of acceptance there that we need to be in a, if, if we're really and truly in a place of peace, we'll be feeling that hard connection um, for that person unconditionally. And yeah. if we're not, we won't. <laughs> we'll be like, <laughs> we'll be creating more shit for ourselves, you know. <laughs> exactly. And look, you know, one of the ways that I often explain to my clients about what, you, what you're saying, just to put it in a, a bit more of a grounded way, yes. everyday way, is um, imagine that you're on a bus and that bus represents the energy that you're in, as in your values at that point in your life what's most important to you right now, and that's the bus you're on. It might be about love, family, it might be about career, whatever, but that's the bus you're on. And sometimes there's people that we get on a new bus and there's mm -hmm. people that we want to bring with us mm -hmm. and they're on the footpath and you're at the door of the bus going, come on, get on, come with me, you know, yeah. Get on the bus. I want you to come with me. But maybe they're not meant to get on your bus at the moment. There's another bus stop down down the road. If yeah. they're meant to get on, they will. Yeah. If they're not, they won't. But while you're standing at that door trying to convince someone to get on your bus and to come with you, you're not looking around to see who else is on your bus and the new connections you can make. Nice. Very good. Because then you're concentrating your energy on your business. And, and business so on many, the bus. Yeah, but so <laughs> many people are looking at that footpath or those people that they want to drag with them. And yeah. this is particularly around relationships, to be or honest. Or they want to run over. Yeah. Oh, I love that, Michelle. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and I'm I sure everyone's had someone that they want to do that with, but. <laughs> but listen, even if they run over them, they don't realise they're just going to be, um, you know, there's going to be another bus that you're on together and you're going to be stuck with the person you ran over. So be careful before you want to run over them. <laughs> Or well, the other vision that, that my guides have just given me is that someone's wanting to get on that bus and you know what, I'm on there. So you're trying to close those doors really quickly to get them off. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Oh, my God. And Tammy, Tammy Bozard said that um, she's detached from family stuff 16 years ago and her life has changed greatly for the best. That's wonderful, sweetheart. I mean, 
Um, I think I think a lot of us do have family stuff that um, uh, look. You know, being in a spiritual industry, it doesn't it doesn't um, mean you've got the perfect family life by by any stretch of the imagination. Because often we have a very challenges within our family just to disrupt us from doing that spiritual path. So. And we've contracted with those people, right? To 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 um, for us to back ourselves 100%. Sometimes we need that 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 uh, questioning. We need that um, block from our family to go um, to commit 100% to ourselves. And so um, sometimes um, the drama, the toxic behaviour, the opinions, uh, perhaps the two-dimensional realities um, that they have, uh, or that level of consciousness. You know, we really need to, as you're saying, Tammy, detach from that and really own our journey, really own own what we're here to do and really take responsibility for it. Um, so, yeah, I, I can relate to that 100%. I've had that through various family members myself, Cammy. So, um, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just sharing. And I, and I think that when it comes to family members, that's where a lot of people struggle because they've got the perception or the belief that, oh, they're family, they're meant to be in in your world and it's meant to flow beautifully and all of that but you know sometimes like you said they can be our biggest critics or our biggest supporters yeah. and both serve us in different ways depending on how we look at it so you know if you've got a family member who's very critical of what you're doing or where you're at then be aware of the role they play in your life yes. and you know, if you've got a project or something you want to do that you need someone to be devil's advocate, then go to them. Yeah. Because yeah. Because you're, you're going to get that. So they're going to, Exactly. They're going to keep it real and they're going to give you whatever the first... They're going to give you the first thing that everybody else would be thinking, which would be wonderful because that will give you the gumption to go ahead and do what you've got to do but also be prepared for questions um, my ha my husband often plays that role. He believes he says he's my biggest fan, but he says whenever I present something to him, he always gives me an honest, the first cab off the rank thing um, that might be pressing on everybody's mind as well, which I really appreciate. And then when after we've talked about it for a while, he goes, "Yeah, you know, I want you to be prepared because if people, are <laughs> but I believe in you 100." <laughs> I believe in the message and, and I think that's a good thing. Um, also, I think the other thing to mention here, because you deal a lot with relationships, twin flames and those kind of things and helping people to find those, navigate that soulmate path and navigate those relationships. Often we, we're we looking for that person before we find our purpose and we expect us to, I'll, I'll, I'll get on with what I'm meant to be doing after I find that person. And often it's the other way around, I have found. What are your views on that, Leanne? Uh, well, the, the Twin Flame Soulmate journey area is quite interesting to look at the information. And for me, the Twin Flame journey is an inward journey. It's not about anyone or anything external of you, first yeah. and foremost. That's so good. I love that. Um, but there is a lot of information out there about people focusing on what someone external of them, my twin flame, he's doing this or she's doing that and whatever, they're a, they're a mirror for you anyway, regardless of whether they're your twin flame or soulmate or just whatever in your life. What is it that they're reflecting? Come back within, change it spiritually, emotionally, you know, look at your beliefs, your stories that are going on, change it within you and then you see something different in your world. Mm -hmm. In terms of soulmate stuff, we all have soulmates. They can be family members, they can be friends, they can be colleagues, yes. as well as a romantic partner. And so, you know, people saying they're on their twin flame journey, it is always about purpose and the bigger planetary purpose and walking mm -hmm. that that path mm -hmm. when you're doing that you will have soulmates come into your reality to help you shift your shit i agree they're just people we've contracted with that we've probably been around so many times before they feel so familiar to us when we meet them and we can love or hate them on first sight 
by the way, it's it's a known being, and that's why we're connected. What we shouldn't be asking is, um, oh, I, I feel so connected to this person. I should jump in with a million percent. What we should be asking is, on in my purpose in this lifetime, with the clarity I have right at this second, am I meant to be having connection with this person, and how much? That's that's where we need to not get all excited and all. Oh, like, you yeah. know, carried away with, um, you know, the fact that we have a strong connection with someone. Oh, my God, it's so amazing. When I first met my husband, I had that. And I was in a position where I didn't want to be in a relationship for two years because I had been on, in back-to-back -back relationships for 11 years. And I didn't want to be in another relationship. But um, after I took a step back and reflected on it, I was meant to. And so it was like, damn, I didn't get that two years. But I have the opposite scenario. I don't don't get me wrong. I don't regret then committing, Sorry. but I just had the opposite scenario where I would have wanted that space to just yeah not be in a relationship, just to be completely one hundred percent, you know, free, free and free and super single. <laughs> Cheeky girl. Anyway, and it's really, I love how you talk about that because you know you you and I have talked personally, and you know a little bit about my backstory, and you know I was originally living in Brisbane, Australia, and had a relationship with someone that was on and off for oh, eight years. And it was it was a soulmate relationship that pushed every button that I had. And yeah, it was really challenging. Funny thing is, he's he was Colombian and living in Australia. The result of that soulmate connection was that I came here to Colombia for a visit for a holiday because I'd heard so much about it and I just loved it and my energy my soul knew I had to be here I didn't know why had nothing to do with him I just felt it in my bones I went back to Australia things got more and more difficult struggled financially business wise relationship wise all of it to the point where I went, all right, I give in, I give up. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to stop struggling and, and staying in my shit and swimming in the shit, which I was, and I'm just going to go, okay, you want me to move? All right, I'm going to do it. I knew no one. I spoke very little Spanish. Amazing. And almost two years ago, jumped on a plane to Colombia and, you know, focused on me because I knew I needed to work through some of my old relationship stuff and some of those programs and patterns and stories that came up, you know, and, and focus on my work, my purpose, what I'm here to do. And, you know, I've been put in connection with the most beautiful, amazing people that are reflecting back the love that I've shown to me. And, you know, I had a couple of moments of clarity just sitting back and watching and going, wow, that person's showing me how much I value, how much I love and how much I know I am worthy. Yeah. And that was so different in my previous relationship that I'm just you know, incredibly proud of the amount of work I've done on me. It's not oh. about the other person. Yeah, feels good. You know, and two years in a foreign culture, mm, a little bit of the language, it's a lot better now. And, you know, here I am connecting people with loved ones who've passed over and there's so much trauma and tragedy in a country that's been in internal war for 50 something years that you yeah. know it yeah and and helping people change their mindsets and their emotions and learn about that that's why i'm here it's got nothing yeah. to do with the relationship if that comes in fantastic and great but i'm focusing on me i'm focusing on my purpose and that's what the twin flame journey is yeah I and I wish that. more people knew that. Right. Me too. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of uh, fantasy around soulmate relationships and things like that, but it's actually very grounded in reality. 
yeah. when you look at you know you, when you look at you had a soul contract with that person and it was to all to bring you to where you are physically now in Colombia and yeah. my god you know I know because I've witnessed your journey and I know you have been like stretched to the max and you yes. know everything like if every button push is pushed you know especially when you're picked up and put, put somewhere it's really you know stretched you to the maximum and you've you know come out with flying colors doing amazing work um still on purpose you know um I feel like um it's just hats off like it's you know commendable um to to and and an inspiration for people to get the message you know when you've got something coming back around ask why is this coming back around again but not in a victim way more in a how is this serving me what am I being poked and prodded to do what is in my best interest here how is this going to really expand my world it may feel uncomfortable I might have to face some stuff shit you know um but but if I do take those steps I'll I'll know that I'm in line I'm in line and I'll feel that that deeper sense of ground beneath my feet um even if the you know the base chakra the security center is is completely shuffled around there's something there's something more there that's holding you down in, in your purpose yeah and you know it's taken me almost two years to get to a point where I'm going you know what I'm really grateful for that previous relationship because I wouldn't be here and this is where I'm needed this is where I've been guided to be for whatever reason and I'm allowing that to unfold every day and more and more gets revealed every day. And, you know, I, I love what I do. I'm passionate about supporting people to know who they are at the core, which is worthy and loved and abundant and valued and, yeah. and here for a purpose, whatever that might be, however big or small you may see it as. We all fit in with the big picture. It all matters. Every step on the journey, every step matters. Everything you do matters. Every single decision to um, align more with you, who you really are, it matters. And um, it matters to everyone. It, you know, sometimes we think, oh, I'm being selfish. Or it, it's not at all. You know, if you take the time out for yourself, because we're all connected in unity, you give back. Immediately you give back to us all. So I want to implore you today to, um, you know, take time to get in touch with yourself, take time to shift your shit, you know, take time, make the time, um, make it a priority for yourself because as you do that, you make it a priority, you make us a priority because you're doing that. You, you make us a priority on a more in, in, integ, integrity level by doing that. It's more, it's more on an integrity level. You're valuing us more, not less. Um, so I just felt really guided to say that, Leanne. Like mm -hmm. that's just wonderful, and you know, and I, I love I really that you brought up integrity, Michelle, because you know the reality is when we're in integrity, we honour everything that comes up, which yes. is the yes. shit as well as mm -hmm. the good stuff, and yes. there is gifts in the shit. Yes. Every single being who pushes a button. Is a gift yep. to you you've just got to yep. ask what's the gift in it yep. and you know my my past soulmate relationship was a gift to get me here yeah but I think so many people are so focused on that heavy negative oh they did this and that blame and you know that side of things and just because we're spiritual doesn't mean we don't go through shit and yep. if someone tells you they don't, then uh, I'd be questioning and looking at that integrity because we all go through it. Yeah, definitely. And I always say problems are unwrapped presents. So we just haven't found the gift in, in them. If we haven't, we haven't unwrapped the present yet to see the gift if we're still seeing it as a problem. Um, you know, pr problems are really invitations for solutions. And... Um, you know, shit is an invitation for us to uh, clear away the diamonds that might be sprinkled in there that, you know, it's an invitation to look for the diamonds because there's probably, you know, a lot of a lot in there that we haven't, you know, cleaned out to see the, the actual true essence of the, 
the, the incredibly enlightening learnings that come through every single experience. Yeah, and, and I love that because, you know, what's popping into my mind is some experiences with personally as well as with clients who particularly as a psychic and a medium, yeah. having clients come to me for readings who want to know, you know, when will I meet my partner or what will happen tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, and I'm of the mindset that we create our own reality. I can tell you what's going on in this present moment and what the possibilities are for tomorrow based on what you're thinking, feeling and doing right now. Yeah. But you get the op option and the opportunity to change that if it's not what you want. Yeah. And as a psychic and a medium, part of my role is to give people the tools and techniques to be able to change that if it's not what they want. Exactly. And I've had so many clients or, or and some personal experiences with psychics or mediums saying, here's what's going to happen and that's it. That's, you know, you can't change it. <sighs> that's yes. just shit. Sorry. Yeah. I think it's because really, um, I think it's really out of integrity to be telling people that, um, Honestly, I, I, I'm glad you, I know, like, for those of you who don't know, like, Leanne has a uh, mediumship school. Um, she has been teaching and educating people in tra and training them way more than mediumship. But anyway, you know, under the banner of mediumship, but has always came from this place of integrity and, and, and how we can do it really responsibility, responsibly. And that's something that Leanne and I have in common. I, yeah. I, you know, me, Leanne, one of my principles is responsibility. And I teach mm. my light work practitioners that, that, you know, you never tell anybody anything in, in stone. They create their reality. You can tell them exactly that. You can tell them, well, if you continue on this certain path, this is what I see happening. But, however, if you change this, I could see that happening. Um, what do you want to happen? And let's let's work out a plan how you can manifest that and create that for yourself. And I always mm. start with... Um, what I call a wish, uh, What ask the person, well, what do you wish for? And if their wish is really um, out of integrity, we can start there and, and discuss that. But if their wish is really genuine and they and, and that's the thing they want, then that's what we work with. How, how can we actually find a way for you to create this and own that this is your reality right now? Um, and, any, and, and like you're saying, work on any barriers or shit that are that, that's in the way that will will you know be, that is preventing them at the current time to to, to see and, that. And I, I love that, Michelle. And I think that when when you're focused on your goals, your dreams, your desires, whatever it might be, you've also got to be aware and in integrity and take responsibility for the people around you and the stories, the beliefs, or the energy that they put in your space. And that includes psychics, mediums, friends, family, friends. partners, whatever. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes you can put a story in someone's mind that then pops them into doubt and uncertainty and wobbles mm. them. You know, yeah. my favorite term is wobble. So yeah. you've got the wobbles, righto. Um, and, and you know, this is from personal experience. I Everything I teach is from personal experience. I had a friend share something with me that put me in wobble mode about another person. And the, I was trying to work through it and look at my feelings and my thoughts and my patterns. Was this my old pattern? Was this truth? What was going on? It manifested in a negative way for me. I take responsibility for it because I was focusing on the energy, focusing on what the other person put in my space. Mm -hmm. Yet the person it was about had my back 100%, honest, mm -hmm. truth, etc. Mm -hmm. And it was just a really awesome learning. Even though it didn't work out great, it was a really good learning in, in shifting and sorting that shit because I allowed someone to put shit in my space. Yeah. And, yes. you know, the reality is I then had to clean it up. Yeah. So I That's want really to... That's really fine-tuning. 
that's really fine tuning your shit radar, isn't it? Because, um, because you know, like spirit speaks through everyone, you know. But also, then there's also opportunities for low vibrational frequencies uh, or other people's projections to come through into our space as well. And then it's like when our shit da, let's call it a shit da, is is, <laughs> is 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 wanting to fine tune itself. Maybe we attract those situations or situations um, <laughs> um, oh, where I we. Love it. <laughs> I can't stop it. I'm on a pun roll. Um, but no, but seriously, um, you know, we attract those situations where we go, oh, this, okay, great. I, I went through that because I really, I'm, I'm really fine tuning my ability to discern and break it down. What is my shit? What is someone else's shit in this situation? Always spirit talking through someone, giving me a warning, which can happen. Um, and, and what, where, where is this sitting right now? Yeah, yeah, really feeling into it, taking the time to, um, yeah, to feel into it. And it's hard when you've got the wobbles to do that. So it's like, um, mm -hmm. you know, oh, okay, look, I might just take some time out to to just to, about what ha just happened. Because um, sometimes people's projections come into the, our space and it's like a freaking bomb goes off, isn't it? It's like, oh and my you God. just feel it in your body and, and it's very hard not to be affected by that energy um and 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 for some people could feel like oh my god my, i've got a really bad feeling it's my intuition but sometimes it can be i've just been bombed with some toxic projection yeah. <laughs> projectile literally yeah and and i think that's where awareness comes in to how you're feeling because that feel is really really important if something feels heavy and you know uh, then you've really got to stop and go hang on a minute, This is this really true for me or is this someone else's projection, like you said, that I need to, to clear out of my space and clean up, you know? Yeah. Um, and it was funny because, like you, know, like you said, someone dropping a shit bomb, really, in, yeah. in your space. And around the same time this all happened for me, my cat, which she never does, did, did a little poo on the, the lounge room floor and I'm like, okay, I get it. Someone has done a poo in my space, right? <laughs> it's funny, Leanne, because I was going to say, well, in those situations, not kidding, this is what I was going to say, but I didn't have to. In those situations, all we have to do is wait for the repeated signs. <laughs> you got one. And and it was funny because I'd been asking my guides, show me oh. the truth here. What's the truth here? <laughs> right? Yeah. And and I'm like, okay, show me the truth, show me the truth. In amongst my wobble, yeah. I had one person saying this and the reality was that that was truth. Another person saying this, which was the shit bomb in my space that created the wobble in between that yeah. then resulted in some negative impacts for me. Yeah. Right, great learning, great, great experience. I can now use that to teach others, you know. But and there, and there in lies the little, the, yeah, there in lies the diamonds you've just plucked out of the shit. That's that's proof in the in the pudding or proof in the shit pudding or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, we've got to be willing to to look at that, and yeah. you know, the reality is that. You know, we all come from different backgrounds, different family experiences, life experiences, and sometimes yeah. that brings along with it some some limiting beliefs, some old stories and some some old energies or emotions that just don't serve you anymore. And yeah. often yeah. when you if feel we... that heaviness, the gift yeah. is often your invitation to let that story go or let that limiting belief go or to shift through that emotion perfectly put because if if um we close the loop on the contract we had with somebody and we say thanks for that got it got it beauty love ya um then it gives them an opportunity to um for us to perhaps be um maybe our contract with them which was look tell you what you be a shit to me for the first half of my life then i'll inspire you for the second half how does that sound you know, yeah. and it, it, it just becomes that we are able to fulfill our contract 
with other people where we, instead of them being below us or anything, it's just, hey, we contracted, you got to activate me and I'm going to inspire you. How does that sound? And if we look at it and we reframe it like that, everybody wins and we're not looking at people as less than us. We're not looking at people as um, they're behind us. They're just doing their job that we ask them to do um, so that we could actually activate. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Uh, bless your little cotton socks. I love you, you know, and that really takes us out of that low vibrational frequency and it really helps us to get on with it and look at the people, like you were saying, in our bus and look at where that bloody bus is going and where we're mm-hmm. heading the direction. I've got a few comments here. Um, and before, before, after I say the comments, I just want to make sure we, we talk about what's coming up with the retreat with you before we run out of time here, Leanne. But um, yeah. we've got Kristen, Kristen Airwald said she agrees. Purpose um, seems to come before soulmate partner. Julie Amber Rose says, I'm grateful for journey and learnt to trust. And um, and Deb Schmitz is saying, absolutely, Leanne, about, 10 minutes, 10, about nine minutes ago. Sorry, Deb. <laughs> we're, we're in grace in our um, Julie, Julie, Ju, Ju, sorry, Julie, I hope I say your name right. Julie Amber Rosoka. Um, that's like what I say to my clients. I see possible futures based upon who you are now and they can shift based on the choices you make from today forward. On your Julie, Amber, Rosica, well done, awesome, awesome. And Deb Shimsa saying, ha, 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 Michelle, fantastic. That's a bad situation, Leanne. <laughs> We've got some more puns coming back right at us. That's cool. Thanks, Deb. I love it. And um, tell, us your, um, tell us your retreat that's coming up that you're running and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a regular thing that's happening twice a year. So people, if you're interested in going over to South America, Leanne's got some incredible retreats that she's planning. Tell them all about it, Leanne. Yeah. Um, So there's one starting next week, which I'm really excited about, and it's called the Mirror of the Soul Retreat, and it's essentially all about shifting your shit. So no matter what area in your life you want changes or shifts or transformations in, whether it's around love, relationships, business, finances, career, health, well-being, whatever it is, then the Mirror of the Soul retreat, you get to choose an area you want to focus on. And we look at what stories are there, what patterns are playing out, what emotions you've got, what needs shifting and changing. And we do that while we take you to some beautiful, amazing spaces here in Colombia that are just Oh, my God, beautiful. Um, Traditional old towns, learning about the inquisitions, the witches, the spiritual stuff that that goes on here, into the mountains and the beautiful waterfalls. And we get to spend time with one of the Indigenous communities here. We've got a beautiful connection that allows us to go and meet with one of the shamans and the mammals and get a blessing and some some teachings from the shamans as well. So we're really looking forward to that starting next week. Um, the Mirror of the Soul Retreat will be every May, mid-May. Dates for next year will come out as soon as we've finished this one. Yep. And we've also got one starting on the 10th of September this year, which is Keys to the Heart. It is focused around twin flames, soulmates, and love. And that includes love for self. So it's not limited to relationship. For me, everything is based on love. So if you've got stuff around business, finances, whatever, your worthiness that you want to shift and transform, then the Keys to the Heart retreats also a really beautiful one that will help you shift and transform whatever's coming up there so that you can open to receiving more love, more joy, more worthiness in your life. I I absolutely adore both of those retreat names. I absolutely adore them. I love them. I just think that were they channeled through those names? I'm sure they would. Yeah. Look, we're we're located in the heart of the world energetically, Mm -hmm. you know, Colombia here in the area that I'm in 
is near the Sierra Nevada, which is a beautiful crystalline healing mountain. Wow. And we have um, ancient cities exactly like Machu Picchu mm. that um, the government here is really protective of the Indigenous people. They've got laws that, you know, really allow that to be protected. So particularly in the lost city, Ciudad Perdida, there's a four or five day hike that you can take to the Indigenous um, city. Wow. That they only let a certain number of tourists in mm -hmm. and they close it regardless of the fact they lose money from tourism for certain periods each year so the Indigenous people can clear it and cleanse it mm -hmm. and do ceremonies. So, wow. you know, and it's also a space yeah, where every new president here in Colombia has to get the blessing of the Indigenous communities. So, wow. yeah, it's just everyone knows Machu Picchu, yeah. but no one knows about the lost city and the beautiful energies that are here in the Sierra Nevada and the heart of the world. I'm, I'm so looking forward to going over there one day and um, and immersing myself in it. Um, Leanne, thank you. thank you for letting us know about that because I can feel it in my belly that it's my belly saying, hum, hum, hum. <laughs> Give me some of that. I want that. I want that. Yeah, yeah. It's my, like my... And look, a lot of people have con concerns when they hear the word Colombia, yeah. and I get that. The yeah. reality is I've lived here for almost two years. Yeah. I came here as a single female. Yeah. I've travelled to a lot of countries in the world. I feel safer here than I do in Bali. Yeah, amazing. And mm -hmm. A lot of people do retreats and stuff in Bali. Yeah. It's cheaper than Bali and yeah. it's got so much more to see and do. Um, safety is really not an issue. It's just the normal standard travel safety stuff. Yeah. You know, if you, if you do stupid stuff, then you're going to get stupid results. Yeah. Well, I um, just let everybody know where they can find you before we sign off today too, Leanne. I'm sure we'll include it in all the links, but it's great for people just if they're watching and they want to click on your website. You're at... Um... Yeah. So my website is thebarefootmedium.com.au. They yeah. can also find me on Facebook, Leanne the Barefoot Medium. Um, YouTube, the same name, and on Instagram, all of the... All of the social media things that we we do <laughs> yeah well i appreciate you joining me today my love i so appreciate your energy um your insight your transparency and your authenticity and your inspiration um and i and um and hey if anybody wants to connect with leanne um for to contribute to um her her tv shows her radio shows her t temple magazine um, she's awesome to work with. She's a, a woman of integrity. I've known Leanne since 2015 when we worked together on Soul TV and um, doing pl platforms together. Um, absolutely awesome. And, and as a host of Enlightened Conversations, absolutely awesome to work with. And, um, and I, I encourage you all to connect with Leanne and um, explore the adventures of South America and the Lost City and the beautiful retreat to Keys to Your Heart and Mirror of the Soul. Sounds beautiful, Leanne. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's always an honour to connect with you and chat and we could talk about so many different things all day. I love it. So thank you. I know. Thank you again. Pleasure. Bye. Bye. Well, thanks to Leanne for joining us today. I just wanted to let everybody know that I have a live stream tomorrow and I'll, I will be joined with Regida. Um, we're going to be talking about the Diamond Consciousness Activation. She's coming in live from Byron Bay and um, we're going to be activating some energy groups, groups between uh, Byron Bay and Sunshine Coast. So it'll be very exciting talking about the new consciousness that is coming in and helping us to really take ownership of that. So. Please join us tomorrow. I'll be on um, on on air with Regida tomorrow morning at, I'm pretty sure it's 11 o'clock. I should have just double checked before I came on air today. I've been so busy. Let me just double check. When am I on with Regida? Where am I? Sorry, everybody. 
Might be a second. I'll put my glasses on. Oh, 11, 11. How can I forget that? It's a very important time, <laughs> 11, 11. We're on 11, 11 and we're going to be on till 12, 12. Um, uh, yeah, that should have stuck in my brain. Okay, everybody, lots of love to you all and we shall see you tomorrow.